Good morning, everyone. Greetings from the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Today, I'm going to discuss about the difference between the ventilatory pressures and the opening pressure of the fistula, and also the distance of the fistula from the carina in patients of tracheoesophageal fistula. We recently published a case series of 88 patients of tracheoesophageal fistula, where we highlighted the importance of a preoperative laryngotracheobronchoscopy. In this study, we found out that three of our patients who were preoperatively diagnosed to have a esophageal atresia because the X-ray did not show the gas in the abdomen. After bronchoscopy, we came to know that there is a fistula. Similarly, we found out an upper pouch fistula, double fistula, a, main, a fistula connecting to the main bronchus, a valicular uh, cyst, and laryngotracheal clefts in some of the patients. What was not included in the study was the opening pressure of the fistula and the distance of the fistula from the carina. So the anesthesiologists, they pointed out at the importance of the ventilatory pressure in such patients and also the distance of the fistula because it helped in fixation of the ET tube. So we aimed to calculate the opening pressure of the fistula and calculate the ventilatory pressure and calculate the difference between these two pressures. And secondly, we aimed to find out the distance of the fistula from the carina. We included all the patients from January 2005 to September 2013. And we did a preoperative laryngotracheobronchoscopy on, in all these patients prior to surgery. So we found out that the average pressure difference was plus 4 centimeters of water and the range was between 0 to 8. The average distance of the fistula from the carina was 6.2 millimeters and it ranged from minus 2 to plus 15. Minus 2 meaning that is it is distal to the carina, that is subcarinal. So the advantages of a preoperative bronchoscopy were not only to help us document the true incidence of other airway anomalies associated with tracheoesophageal fistula, but it also helped us in defining the exact site of fistula and bronchoscopically we could cannulate this fistula with a ureteric catheter and then identify it intraoperatively at the time of surgery. So we concluded that the pressure difference was 4 and so we have to aim at providing a peak inspiratory pressure of not more than plus 4 either preoperatively, intraoperatively or postoperatively as it might lead to gastric distension. The fistula lies at a distance of about plus 6 millimeters, of, uh, millimeters, that is the average distance, and hence the ET tube positioning should be such. Thank you. Uh, last, last day we had a discussion with our anesthetist in our Calicut department. In fact, all the problems are on the right side, because when you have a distal fistula, you have a consolidation upper lobe right side, you have to do a right thoracotomy, you have to put the baby in the left lateral position. Yes. And sometimes you have a fistula to the right main bronchus. It's very rare to have a fistula in the left main bronchus. So during intubation, if you put the tube directed to the left main bronchus, with some ventilation to the right bronchus, most of the problems are solved because during surgery you can collapse the lung. And uh, why should, you, should you go for such an elaborate procedure? Yes, sir. actually, firstly, what you said that just can you let the left main bronchus, put the tube in left main bronchus, not only because of technical difficulty, but also there are other problems of single lung ventilation. And plus, left side is the dependent side when you're putting in right thoracotomy. And secondly, preoperative bronchoscopy not only helps us in all these things, but cases like esophageal atresia, which were diagnosed preoperatively, then you find a fistula, definitely you provide, you are avoiding a diversion and you're going for a primary repair. Because you, if the surgeon already knows that this is an esophageal atresia, the plan is diversion. But if you've done a preoperative laryngotracheobronchoscopy, so in almost like 20% we found other airway anomalies, which we would have missed. Similarly, laryngotracheal cleft. We come back usually post-operatively seeing that the child is deteriorating, not improving, what's the cause? And we retrospectively find the cause. So it's better to do a pre, it, it'll take hardly 15 minutes. We do it regularly in all our patients of TEF. And it gives us additional information. What you are telling is that the advantage of tracheobronchoscopy, that do you agree? But what is the ultimate relevance of your study in patient survival and other management? That is pressure measurement and the distance. 
that yes, you sir. should explain so the pressure measurement is important as in pre operatively intra operatively and post operatively we have to have a basic idea about what is the ideal pressure at which we should ventilate the lungs because anything more than so we have calculated in our study that it is about plus 4 so if we are giving a pressure above plus 4 it will not only pre operatively it is going to give us more gastric distension intra operatively more problem in ventilation can lead to barotrauma and post operatively can lead to opening of the fistula repair so we have to keep this in mind that the ideal pressure should be about plus 4 if we are giving less than that it will not open the fistula so it will not help us in identifying in uh, putting a catheter and not uh, the advantage of bronchoscopy will be uh, crossed over so surpassed so that's why to find out the ideal pressure and second thing is distance in distance not uh, because uh, the range has been given so we should also keep in mind that some of the fistulas can be subcarinal which are difficult to locate intraoperatively so if we do a bronchoscopy cannulate the fistula it will help us in the operative procedure too Dinesh brief, brief question uh, we use a ureteric catheter which is calibrated so that's how we do when we, when we do a scopy and we can that is the average sir Millimeters, yes, sir. You are looking and on, and then the measurement is like this. Ashley? The Sorry. measurement is in millimeters, but the average of 88 cases is 6.2 millimeters. Uh, sorry, Ashley De Cruz from Bangalore. Uh, nice paper, great presentation. Uh, I have no arguments with the need for bronchoscopy. It's, it's very valuable, and maybe now with the availability of bronchoscopy for neonates, it's useful because it, a lot of the surprises you mentioned will not occur. It was not in the teaching before. What I have argument with, and I'd like you to explain it, is that neonate ventilation is a dynamic procedure. It's a process of changing pressures almost every hour. You know, pulmonary compliance, mean airway pressure, ventilating PIP, PEEP, etc. And this experience we have all the time. So how relevant is to have such arbitrary figure pressures uh, to define that this will open, not open? You know? So I think you need to take that into account when you talk of giving recommendations. So that's why we have studied about 88 case series before putting Last question. Last question. Uh, continuing that, you know, the, you said PAP plus 4. What do you mean by that still? I don't understand. In the newborn, you give the peak inspirated pressure, you may use it to between 18 to 20 or something like that. How do you get that plus four, number one? And why don't you use Fogarty catheter instead of a ureteric catheter where you can occlude your, because you have expertise to do and you're doing regularly, you can use it so that you don't need to worry about the ventilation or the distension while you anesthetize pre -op, you know, perioperatively prior to the ligation of the fistula. Yes, so the first, answering the first question, that plus four figure, Be you're brief. Right, that is the, yes, brief. that is the difference that is above the inspiratory pressure, the peak inspiratory pressure that we are giving to open the fistula, that is plus four, is what I highlighted in the study firstly. And secondly, use of a Fogarty catheter, that can also be done. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kashish.